Alright, so we're continuing talking about piezoelectric sensors, and now I'm going to talk about some structural uh, methods you can use in piezoelectric sensors to get a larger voltage output. And typically, this is what the output is it's voltage. So, just like we talked about in the actuator, there's going to be two other things besides materials that we can use to get a larger sensing value. Uh, that aren't too complicated to think about. There's a lot of different ways, compliant mechanisms, things like this. Uh, but today, uh, we're going to be talking about um, just these simple ideas. The first of which is multilayer. And we went over this in all actuators, but we'll do it again for our sensors just to convince you. So for a solid piece of material, well this is a, a sectioned off one, but let's say for the solid piece of material, if you apply a force here, uh, what are we going to get uh, afterwards? Uh, we're we're going to start off with you know Q equals D times F, um, and then the voltage equals D times F over C, right? Which is the capacitance. And then we ended up with this, which I did the full derivation last time, the stress, G times the stress, divided by the thickness, which in this case is also the length. Uh, that is the voltage constant. And we'll go through the same derivation exactly, these two steps, and we'll end up with this equation again in this side with regards to the uh, section material because we have the same forces right forces are continuous the force is constant throughout the entire thing the stress is all constant so we have the G over thickness but in this case the thickness is related to each sections thickness so because we have one two three four sections we can put a four down here or oh, sorry uh, the, the thickness is divided by four so we ended up end up with a four on the top and thereby we have a larger uh, piezoelectric constant or uh, sorry a larger voltage developed from a f equivalent force on the same stru these same structures catches multilayers are maybe a little more, much more difficult to make and uh, they cost more the other tactic we can use just like we use in actuators is we use a different mode we apply a force in one way and we gather charge and we calculate and we get the voltage in another way so we have ARP is electric material and we apply forces on either side and we say the top is not electroded you know and the bottom is electroded and we're going to be applying the force on the side. So the force is applied in the one direction, the the charge is developed in the three direction. So what parameter do we use to measure that? D13. But the, but because D13 and D31 uh, are the same uh, for piezoelectric materials, if you push on a material and you gather a charge or you put voltage and you get a charge and then you get a dis deformation, they're going to be equal and use the same uh, you know, the same relationship. So this is a force in the one direction, but we can't use force now because that was derived for the applying the force and getting the charge in the same side. This, in this case, we're going to have to use a different equation. The equation we're going to use is going back to the original one. We have stress, and let's call this in the one direction, equals the D in the three direction. Now this is D31 relating both of these quantities, or D13. Take your pick. That's Q divided by the area, and this is the area 3, which is larger. That's D31, force divided by area 1. And then if we now continue uh, with this derivation, we have the charge is equal to the capacitance, and we're talking about the capacitance in the 3 direction. I'm just going to write this. You don't write the capacitance with the 3 with an initial, but we're going to do that right now. So that's QV in the 3 direction. Um, and we'll take our area term. So D31 is still there. F, uh, we'll call it F1. And then we have A3 over A1. Now, when we divide the voltage out 
to, I mean, divide the capacitance off to the other side, we're going to get the area, 3, times the thickness. And now we're calling the thickness the direction in the 3 direction. And then we're going to have the permittivity in the 3 direction again. Uh, and this is divided by the 3, 1. Uh, we have a force here, and we have area 3 over area 1. We'll notice that these areas three cancels out. So these area in the three direction they cancel, and we see this sort of piezo tube G three one in the three drawn direction, and then we have this thickness. So that's the force over the area here. That's the stress in the one direction, divided by the thickness in the three direction. So what did we essentially do? Instead of having this long side counting as a thickness and degrading our performance, we're only using this this side right here as a thickness. Therefore, by using a smaller thickness, we're getting a smaller value on the bottom than the denominator, which makes the number increase. So we hit, therefore we get a we get a um, enhancement of the uh, piezoelectric voltage. And if you wanted to just think about, um, yep, so that we so we get enhancement of the voltage. Next video, I'm going to be talking about current. When we have a piezoelectric material and you are putting an alternating force on it, and let's say you have both the sides connected, so what's the current inside of here? This is the question we're going to be answering next time. Thanks for watching.